Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of specialization. So to begin with, I guess a quick introduction to what we mean by specialization. This is where certain economies are going to produce certain goods or services. So a particular country will specialize in production of one product. We might say in the United Kingdom that we're specialized in financial services. In Japan, they're specialized in, say, cars and also consumer electronics. And then lots of other countries are specialized in certain raw materials, such as food or oil, or diamonds in South Africa, that sort of thing. So we have certain economies focusing on certain areas, and then they can just trade with each other so everyone has access to the same number of goods. And we can also see this at a business level, so it's not just certain economies, but within a business we can have certain people that are doing certain jobs. So we have certain people that are specialized and they are in the finance department of a business, other people are in human resources, other people are actually producing the good in the manufacturing, in the factory, and so on. So we specialize all the time, um, but we're going to be focused a bit more on the macro economy here. So looking at whole economies specializing in certain goods, services, or raw materials, that sort of thing. So let's get into the pros of specializing. And the most obvious one is that we can specialize in our best area. So a certain country can produce what it's best at. Obvious examples are countries that have access to certain raw materials. So we mentioned South Africa. There are lots of naturally occurring diamonds in South Africa. So it makes sense for them to specialize in the diamond industry because they have access to it. And for generations, they have been mining diamonds. So they've become pretty good at it. And they've got certain methods that they can use such that they are more efficient. So this is a big benefit that everyone benefits from someone that is best at something doing it because they can produce a lot more of that thing. And this will sort of knock on to the next points that we have lower down. But the point is that if someone that is most efficient in an area does it, this means that there will be lots more diamonds available for everyone because someone that is good at producing diamonds is doing it. And then they can trade and then sell these on to other people. And we're all going to be better off because of it. And because South Africa are the ones that are getting uh, lots of the diamonds for us, then this allows other countries not to focus on that thing, and they can in turn focus on their best area. So in the United Kingdom, we can focus on banking and finance, and in Japan, they can focus on producing electronics, producing automobiles, and I guess Germany as well, um, producing cars. And, okay, I'm maybe oversimplifying this, South Africa do produce lots of other things other than diamonds, and so Japan also produce a lot more than cars and electronics, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say these are some things that they are specialized in. And different economies don't just specialize in one thing, but I'm not going to go through all the examples of what specific countries specialize in. So this sort of also leads on to this next point, but it is a point on its own that we have lower training costs if we're specializing in something. Because, for example, if we are a car manufacturer in a certain country, we can just train our employees or even just the members of our economies how to produce cars. And okay, there's going to be lots of different roles within this. We have people that are actually on the production floor and we also have human resources departments, finance departments and so on. But it's a lot easier and it's a lot cheaper to just say train someone how to produce a car and we don't have to train that same person how to um, mine diamonds, how to do financial services, how to work in the banking industry, uh, and so on, we only have to train them how to produce a car. And so this is going to give us a lot lower training costs because, again, different economies can train people in how to do different things, and we can just focus on one thing. And if we're only training someone in one thing, they're going to become really productive in that area because they only have to remember how to produce a car. And so this will become their best area and again, we have all these benefits from more efficient production. And now these points sort of lead on from this, that we benefit from economies of scale. If we are a country that is specializing in producing one thing, we're producing lots of televisions. Well, we can purchase lots of specialist equipment 
that produces TVs quicker. In the past, we might have had certain things that were being produced manually by hand, but now we have lots of specialist machinery that can produce these very quickly. And this is what economies of scale is, is that the more we produce of something, the lower the average cost of production is going to be because we have lots of specialist things to produce this. We have specialist people who are really good at producing TVs, so that's going to reduce our average costs. We have specialist machinery. We also are going to have things like production lines. So we're even going to specialize within our industries and within our businesses so that we break up production and our individual people are going to be specialized. And all of this is going to make our production have a lower average cost. And what this will give us is knock on effects. We have lower price goods because they're cheaper to produce, so we can sell them for cheaper. And this is obviously good for consumers having lower prices. We can also produce a higher quantity. Remember, we've got all this machinery and production lines, which can produce say thousands of televisions or cars every single day. So we've got lots of, we've got lots and lots of low price goods. So everyone in the world can have access to these products because we're specialized in them. We can also produce better quality goods. If these things are being made by machinery, we're gonna have much fewer mistakes. So they're gonna be high quality. And again, a knock on of this is that we have reduced wastage. Machines are likely to get things right every single time. Whereas if we were manually doing these things and we couldn't invest in this machinery, then we might make mistakes. We might have to throw away a lot of our raw materials. We also might be wasting people's time if they spend hours and hours on a good, but then make a mistake at the end of the production process and have to throw it away. So this reduced waste is increasingly important in today's world where we're looking at climate change and sort of pollution in our oceans, that sort of thing. Reduced waste is also a big benefit of specialization. And, but all of these, I've sort of skipped through these, but these are a lot of our major benefits. We have low price goods, a high quantity of them. We've got high quality and reduced wastage. This is all huge benefits from specialization. And it may be obvious, but we didn't necessarily have specialization in the world until very recently. So these are all benefits that we have gained from in recent years, the last couple of centuries, perhaps, and because we've started to divide our production processes up. And in the past, we would have had people having to farm their own food and then do all of their different jobs and maintain their houses and everything like that. They'd have to do it all themselves and they didn't hire people to do these things for them. So these are all great benefits of specialization. But there are still some negatives and drawbacks from specialization, which we can't forget. And one of the key ones is that economies are not self-sufficient anymore. We're trading with other countries to get in our cars, to get in our raw materials, to get in our food. And this means that we're reliant on these other countries. We're not self-sufficient. We can't survive on our own. And in the world of trade, we trade so much with all these countries that it doesn't seem like a massive problem being self-sufficient because in living memory, we don't really remember, say, times of wars, times of, um, times of conflict. But this can be a problem. So we'll write down war there because if trading breaks down between two countries, and this doesn't even have to be because of war, um, in the news at the moment, we're seeing that there are disputes between France and the United Kingdom over fishing rules and that France may cut off, say, energy supplies to the United Kingdom, any sort of trade dispute can cause a major problem for economy. Because, for example, if it's who's providing them with oil or energy, then that country, as a sanction against, against your country, can cut off supply of oil, which is going to obviously be massively problematic for your economy because we rely on oil. The same is true for food. If you have a dispute with a country and you're, you can't import food, well, your population is going to starve. And so we see a lot of countries that actually have regulation that says we have to produce a certain amount of our own food because if we do have problems with trade, well, then at least we're going to have some food left over. We can't just purely rely on other countries for our food. We need some sort of production in our own economy. So if there are trade problems, and again, this trade problem doesn't have to be just because of conflict, we could say have a natural disaster 
that doesn't allow for trade, or something like a pandemic that massively limits production of certain goods, well, countries aren't going to want to export this. So they're going to keep it all for themselves and stop trading with you. And that's not because of a war. These things can happen um, where you just can't get goods and you can't import certain goods. So this self-sufficiency can be a problem. We also have reduced flexibility, and this can lead to structural unemployment. So, for example, we've seen, this is maybe one for a few years in the past, but we saw certain economies, the UK in particular, certain cities within the UK were focused on coal production and coal mining. And what happened was that this industry sort of went, well, it was a lot less competitive in the United Kingdom. Coal prices were high compared to other places in the world. So these coal mines sort of went out of business. And what you are left with is lots of people that are trained and all they know is coal production because we've specialized and in these pros column we said you only have to train someone in one area because oh this person only needs to produce a car and they only need to produce coal but what happens when that good is no longer in demand well they're producing all this coal but we're not really going to be able to sell on the market and you're left with lots and lots of people that all they know is how to produce coal. So this is reduced flexibility. They can't easily move into a different industry. And at the moment, we're looking at moving into renewable energy. But this takes a completely different skill set to produce renewable energy than it does to produce fossil fuels. So you lead, this can lead to structural unemployment. All these people can't change industries because they only know one thing. They only know they're only trained in this one area. And it's not necessarily going to, be, going to mean that they're unemployed forever. They can retrain, but it takes a long time to learn a whole new trade and to learn how to, say, work in the renewable energy industry or any other industry that they want to move into. You can spend years learning a new trade. And so this structural unemployment is a major problem. You can have people that are suffering from poverty because they can't earn any money and whole communities that are focused on this one this production of this one good can be in massive trouble because this industry just all of a sudden is not in demand anymore and these people don't have jobs. And the final point is that production can be repetitive and boring. And this is mainly for uh, specialization within a business and say if you're working on a production line in a factory and you are just specializing in one very specific task, well, it's going to be very boring. You're doing the same thing over and over again and it could be a very, well, they often are very manual, repetitive tasks because that's the most efficient way to do something. You have one person doing something very repetitive and this can be boring. And again, certain people that are only trained in one industry, again, they may, they may get bored of that job if they're doing it for 60 years. They may want to change and they can't because it will take years and it's too much investment of your time and money to get retrained in another industry. So this may be more of a, at an individual level. Also, specialization is not necessarily good for people's happiness. Some people want variety, and variety is generally seen as a good thing for people. So specializing in just one area is not necessarily good for our well-being. So those are four cons of specialization, and we have a lot more in the pros column. But it's not necessarily the fact that specialization is always a good thing. And I think this sort of self-sufficiency point is potentially the most important one, especially when we have things like wars. Countries can really struggle because they can't produce enough food to feed their population. And also this reduced flexibility where economies will go through periods where they can't adapt to changes in, well, in the world economy. So those are some evaluation points if you're writing an essay, say, on specialization that you can use. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do leave a like rating. Make sure to check out the channel for more videos like this one and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.